Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome to another one of my productivity training videos. In this video, I want to give you an introduction to Alfred. Now, Alfred is a productivity tool I've been using on the Mac for a number of years now, probably going on five or six years, I would say, at this point. And I would say now it is an absolutely crucial tool in my productivity workflow. And when I get a new computer, this is definitely one of the first things on my list that I need to download and set up. Now, if you have any questions at the end of this video, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment below and I'm happy to answer any questions there. So let's start by talking a little bit about what is Alfred in the first place. Well, Alfred, simply put, is a search tool for the Mac. But wait, why do you need Alfred if the Mac already comes with Spotlight? I hear you ask. Well, Spotlight, which comes on the Mac if you press Command slash, is the built-in search. And you can use that to search for contacts, um, documents, if I'm looking for business performance, I can find things like this spreadsheet here, I can search for folders, I can search for notes, and basically it's just the global search across my Mac. But with Alfred, and if I do option space here, that is my um, command for Alfred, very similar interface, it just brings up this search box. It allows me to search for all the same things like contacts, files, documents, but it is number one, a lot more powerful, it's a lot more customizable and it allows me to do some pretty cool advanced productivity tricks and workflows as well. So let's have a look at what those are. Firstly, I'm going to go into the Alfred preferences. I'm just going to search for pref here and I'm going to open the Alfred preferences window. Now, one of the first things I can do is I can customize the appearance of Alfred. So I've got, um, there's this light theme here, um, this modern one. There's a lot of just built-in default themes. I've created this one called Spotlight Dark, which is kind of similar to the built-in, the dark spotlight one. Um, but that's just something nice, is if I want to design the look and the feel of my search and have it a bit more unique to the style and colors and things that I like, that's a really cool thing that I can do is in Alfred, is I can just change the appearance and exactly how everything looks. If I go to my features list here, I'm gonna run down this list and talk about some of my favorite features inside Alfred. So as I mentioned before, you can search for files on your computer just like you do with Spotlight. But the difference is you can now perform actions on the files that it finds. So if I just minimize this for a sec, let's just find a document like ConvertKit Manual. So I found this pages document here. Now if I hit my right arrow, you can see it brings up all these extra options here. I can open the file, I can open with a different document, I could reveal the file in the finder and find it, I could copy it, move it, delete it, I can choose to um, open, uh, copy the path, the clipboard path, um, all sorts of different things I can do just using this sort of typing command line style interface. Uh, you can't do these things with Spotlight. So if I just want to use my keyboard and, and use typing commands to open and manipulate my files, that's one of the cool powerful things that you can do with Alfred. So if I wanted to, I could quickly say, copy this file to my clipboard and hit enter. So now I've copied the file. Without having to go into the finder, I have copied that file. And then I can bring up an email and I could paste that in there. So those are the file searching capabilities within Alfred, a lot more powerful than Spotlight. One of my favorite features by far is the web search within Alfred. So what this lets you do is rather than just Googling something like you can do with Spotlight, I can search specific directories, for example, YouTube or Amazon. So I can say here, YouTube, let's just say Apple, and then in Alfred is gonna search YouTube for videos related to Apple. And so there you go, you can see the results here. Apple has been searched up here. Now, the way this works is that Alfred has remembered the URL for this search. So it knows that it needs to go to www.youtube.com slash results, question mark, search underscore query equals, and then you have the query, the search term that you are looking for. So with that in mind, we can actually create our own custom searches. If I go back to my preferences, I've created some here for searching different databases and directories related to my business and website. So one example is Stripe. I use Stripe for collecting payments for my business and the, the search URL is dashboard.stripe.com slash search question mark query equals and then I've got this squiggly bracket query here. That's where I'm telling Alfred put my search query here in the URL. 
And then I can say, right, we are going to search Stripe for, and then whatever my query is. So let's give that a quick test. If I say Stripe, and you can say search, it says here, search Stripe for, and let's just do pool at poolminers.com. So once I hit return, the results appear in my browser. You can see uh, Alfred navigates to the URL. It fills in the search query for me, and it brings me up my results on this page. So I've done something similar with uh, searching for payments on Stripe, searching for pages, blog posts on my WordPress website, searching my Dropbox folder on the web, um, subscribers in my ConvertKit account. This is definitely one of the features of Alfred that I use the most. I probably use this a couple of times a day for searching across different tools and apps that I use. Another feature that I really like in Alfred is the ability to open bookmarks that I have saved in Safari or Chrome. So the way I can trigger this is via a keyword here. And I've said, if I type BB, that is my prefix to um, tell Alfred to search specifically for a bookmark. And then basically all the bookmarks that I currently have set up in Safari, or if you've got bookmarks in Chrome, it'll do the same thing. Uh, I can open those bookmarks. So if I go BB and let's go to ConvertKit, I can go to, I've actually bookmarked a number of pages here. Let's just go to ConvertKit in my favorites. It opens a new tab. Let's just bring that into the window. And now I've opened my ConvertKit account. Again, I probably use this uh, dozens, maybe even hundreds of times a day. So I can go BB, um, what's another website? Let's do just Apple NZ. Brings up Apple, just bring that into the window. And so it just opens, um, opens this website. So rather than having to go to Safari, do Command T to open a new tab or to Google to go to a website, if I've bookmarked a page, I can very quickly open that using Alfred. Another feature that I really like, there's so many good features in here, but the clipboard history is a real time saver. So anytime I copy text, um, images, files, and things to my clipboard, Alfred, Alfred will remember those. So it's actually storing three months worth of clipboard history, text-based clipboard history for me. Now I can retrieve that using the shortcut control space. So if I do control space, this is my clipboard history. In fact, you see the most recent item there is the document that I copied earlier. But it's copied text here, it's got links, um, all sorts of uh, bits of text that I've copied in the last three months. Now I can, if I want, search this to find a particular piece of text. So for example, if I type something like content calendar, I can find, uh, let's say, here's, here's some text that I used in a blog post a couple of weeks ago. I can quickly retrieve that. And if I hit enter or return on my keyboard, I've now copied that to the top of my clipboard. So if I paste, I can spit that text out anywhere that I am typing. Again, this is another feature that I use dozens, maybe even hundreds of times a day as I'm typing and, and finding old links and things that I've recently used in Alfred. Another really useful feature of Alfred is the snippets section. Now, I actually don't use this feature. I prefer to use a different app called Text Expander for snippets and text. And I have a couple of videos on Text Expander if you want to have a look at those. But what snippets are is it's a way of storing text that I can easily retrieve later, similar to the clipboard history, but these this is for more things like email templates and text that I want to save in a more permanent way. So what I can do here is um, add a new snippet and I can just call this, you know, intro email and I can give the keyword, let's say just intro and I can say hi and then maybe I'll put in, I can put in placeholders here like the time, the date. Um, I'm just gonna put in name for now. I'll fill that in later and I can say, you know, I'll just put in some dummy text for now. Thanks, Paul. So this is the this is the template, the email template that I want to save and easily retrieve later. So once I have that snippet saved, I can type the word snip and then my keyword from my trigger to generate that result. So if I'm um, typing an email here, if I go um, option space to bring up Alfred, I'm then going to type snip and then I go intro. And that's going to help me just really quickly spit out that email template and then I can uh, edit this, you know, put in the person's name and I can hit send. Now, I prefer to use Text Expander for this because the fill ins for things like name, I think Text Expander does a much better job of handling those. But um, if you're going to pay for just one tool and you're a bit more budget conscious, I would recommend going with Alfred because it comes with that functionality and a lot more other 
powerful features and things as well. There are some other great features and things in here like this, the calculator, the dictionary, the ability to search contacts, control your music. Um, I won't go through all of these, but another feature that I do really like is the one password. Um, access as well. So because I have one password installed on my computer, I've got all my login details there. If I type 1P and then let's go to convert kit, convert kit, uh, I can then hit enter and I'll put in my master password. And now a new tab is going to be opened in my browser and I can automatically get logged into that website really quickly. I don't have to open a new tab, go to the website, log in separately. Alfred can actually launch the website and log me in really quickly using my 1Password integration there. If you're not using 1Password, I have another video on my channel about how to get started with that tool as well. Another really handy feature in Alfred is the ability to run system commands. So I can do things like uh, put my Mac to sleep, or I could say restart or shut down, or I can even do empty the trash as well. So these are sort of quick little um, commands that I can run to do things on my Mac without having to go to different menus and use my mouse. So those are the built-in features in Alfred here. A uh, lot of power, a lot of different customization and controls that we have. And then one of the really great features of Alfred, and this is if you get the Power Pack, if you purchase a license, which is the Alfred Power Pack, you can then create your own productivity workflows. So these can be triggered by different keywords and, and triggers and things, and they let you perform various actions. Some examples of things that I've done is I've created a do not disturb, uh, sorry, a, a dark mode switcher. So this triggers when I type the keyword dark. It will then run a script that will change my max um, preferences, like my background and the dark theme. And um, there's, a, there's a couple of scripts being run here. So if I go quickly dark, you can see the interface has changed, the um, wallpaper has changed there, and even the Alfred appearance has changed. So I can switch between light and dark mode really quickly. I've created a similar one called uh, Do Not Disturb. So if I type DND, whoops, not DVD, DND, I can toggle Do Not Disturb on and off uh, if I want to stop notifications. I've even created one for creating tasks in Asana. So if I type the keyword task, and uh, I can then have Alfred run a script which will send the task to Zapier. Zapier is the automation tool that I use to then create the task in Asana. So I can just go task, test, and that will trigger Zapier to create a new task in my Asana account. So as you can see, these workflows, it's sort of where Alfred really hits another level in terms of complexity and capability and what it can do. A lot of these workflows I haven't even set up myself. One of the great thing is, is that there is a very vibrant Alfred community and you can go to the Alfred website. A lot of these workflows, things like this currency converter here, other people have built and you can simply download them. So quite honestly, I don't really know how this works. I know it's running some script and it's working something out, but um, I, I didn't set this up. I just downloaded this from the Alfred community. So this workflow, for example, I downloaded this from Alfred's community. If I type CS, then all these different options come up, which allow me to record my screen, to capture screenshots, capture my window, annotate images using the CleanShot app. This is a workflow that somebody else built and it's up there for free. So absolutely amazing that things like this are available to download for Alfred. So I hope this video has been useful. If you're a productivity geek like me and you love figuring out how to take tools to that next level, uh, then I would definitely recommend giving Alfred a go. It's a lot more powerful and capable than Spotlight. And once you spend some time getting into things like workflows and the different features here, I think you'll find it can really help you to get things done a lot quicker on your Mac. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.